Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're back with another weekly recap. We're on week number 26, which means uh, we've done about half a year's worth of recaps. Uh, so thanks for tuning in once again. This week we had a ton of interesting things happen. Torvesta has been banned from Dead Man mode. We saw the release of the Seed Vault, as well as we have more information on some of the new Clue Scroll reward items that will be released with the upcoming Clue Scroll expansion. That and a lot more, I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started. So we received one content update this week on March 28th, and that is the Seed Vault. It currently is available in the Farming Guild, and has replaced the Seed Stall that you couldn't actually thieve uh, in the kind of middle part of the guild. There has been a brand new Seed Vault added to the Farming Guild. Stored seeds are separated by type and you can add your favorites to their own section. Perfect for setting up farm runs, however it only stores standard seeds and not quest ones. For those who are really running low on bank space, this update will help with a lot. There must be like 30, 40, or 50 seeds there that can really just be completely removed uh, from your bank. One thing worth noting is Ultimate Iron Man cannot use the Seed Vault, so you can't actually use that to store items for later. Now it is possible, you still may want to have some seeds in your bank. Uh, because it is only accessible from the farming guild and if you don't have access to it or you just don't want to go there you may want to still have uh, some herb seeds or something in your bank but still an amazing update and i'm excited to try it out next up here for those who play runescape mobile on an android device you can now log into android with a google account with a new button on the login screen i'm assuming this will allow you to have multiple uh, google profiles that will allow you to switch between your actual runescape accounts because right now it only will remember one account and one authenticator so it would be nice to be able to switch between two or three accounts if you already have an old school runescape account you can link them for faster login on your android device you need to visit the linked accounts page in the account section of the runescape website and link your google account and at the bottom here there's an interesting uh, paragraph called upcoming ironman changes and it has to do with the canon they said they're aware of several mechanics that actually affects the integrity of the iron man mode the main issue is using a cannon on a alt account to lure monsters uh, which is achieved by reducing the alt's attack bonus to a point that the cannon never hit such strategies artificially boost the xp rates for iron man accounts the proposed change for this is they're giving the cannon a small chance of dealing one damage even for players with extremely low accuracy the damage will only occur if the npc is above a certain threshold health and the damage is only applied if the player would have previously not hit due to negative attack bonuses so this won't actually affect regular players cannoning or increase the DPS at all, but it's there to remove that one Iron Man mechanic that they're going to try to remove from the game. And probably the most important update, when you run out of prayer points, the message now states you can recharge your prayer points, not you must recharge your prayer points. So uh, no pressure there. And that is it for the content update this week. Now as part of the weekly Q&A, uh, they actually did a bit of a preview on some of the new clue scroll rewards. So we have the Third Age Plate Skirt, we have the Heraldric Set, the Cape of Skulls, uh, the Tormented Bracelet Ornament Kit. These items do look pretty cool and I am extremely excited for the Clue Scroll expansion. Okay, so next up here in community news, the big one for this week is Torvesta was disqualified from the Deadman Mode tournament for muling. And people have been kind of rioting on Reddit, social media, with the hashtag free Torvesta. There are minor arguments over this, but it kind of boils down to most people agree that Torvesta did technically break the rules. Muling in Deadman mode is when you transfer a bunch of wealth onto a level 3 account or an account that always will stay in the safe zone, uh, which it does appear that he did. However, on the flip side, there are a ton of people who do this, and Torvesta was only really caught and singled out because of how popular of a YouTube channel he has. And I'm sure if Torvesta actually thought he was breaking the rules, he would not have done that. And as been mentioned in previous tournaments, he's been given the green light to do something like this. And unfortunately, Deadman Moon has so much gray area, and that's kind of why I think it's never going to succeed properly, is that the inherent game mechanics of RuneScape allow for so much essential cheating in Deadman modes. Stuff like muling, boxing, swapping gold. It's just really challenging to have a fair competitive environment in something like the RuneScape game. I think definitely they're trying to set an example or a scapegoat so people don't do it. And in a way, it is nice to see that they aren't giving, uh, well, big content creators special treatment. But then the other side, they probably gave him special treatment by banning him. I think a normal account would not have been banned for this. Now, JakeX did address this a bit in the Q&A, and they said that Torvesta's account was a mule in our eyes, and the ban will not be reverted. There's been many accounts that have been banned and treated the same way, including content creators, and they're not looking to reverse that. So it does look like he is going to be banned permanently from this tournament. Alright, next up here, uh, today is the 20 year anniversary of the release of Devious Mud, which was the precursor game to uh, RuneScape Classic. That is absolutely insane. RuneScape has pretty much been around for 20 years now, making it by far one of the longest running games of all time. I think RuneScape has to be top 3 in popularity for games that have been around this long. I made a video on this a while back comparing the longest running games and when 
Wolt RuneScape or RuneScape in general would become the longest running game. I think at this rate it easily could become the longest running MMO game that is still hosted by the first party server essentially. Next up here we have another RuneLite update to 1.5.18. There's been a quest list plugin added which adds a button to toggle visibility of completed quests and adds a search function to look for quests in your quest panel. Another amazing feature. The special attack counter plugin now shares special attack hits with your party members with this information displayed in the tooltip. So now anyone in your party will actually be able to see when your special attack will be ready I believe which is extremely useful. I'm not even sure how they got the information to transfer over but that's really cool. And once again a few minor bug fixes but another awesome runelight update. It seems like the runescape wiki will be officially added into the game to some extent. They said Kiernan's about to add a link to the game removing the need to type it. So we're getting runelight integration, we're getting the official client integration. I think very soon the new wiki will be by far the most popular in search rankings and we can finally get rid of that old fandom one which is complete trash now that you look back at it. The number 13 ranked hardcore Ironman has died and he's the first max hardcore Ironman to die. This is very uncommon because once you max a hardcore Ironman I think most people are going to stop playing it or at the very least stop doing risky content on it because he was ranked number 13 and would probably stay in the top 100 for a long time. Unfortunately it was due to a DC, very unfortunate but still an amazing achievement. Also a shout out to Wild Mudkip who actually maxed this week as well, congrats to you man. I think he did that in a really short period of time, it was only like a year and a half or two years, still very impressive. So for the second time in the last couple of weeks, Venezuela has suffered a countrywide blackout and by looking at the item quantities and bond prices we can see that it has directly affected the runescape economy once again. So if you're ever looking for a good time to go to heavily botted uh, skills or money makers, now is a good time to do so with a lot of the bots currently offline. And another awesome reddit post is the world 2 Falador trading map. This is taken from reddit posted by a user named Dead Yen. I really love seeing these pre uh, GE trading maps. They're really cool looking and they bring back a lot of memories. Such specific trading areas like mystic robes and other mage gear. Cavaliers? Like what the hell? Why is that in the actual area? Rune boots, dragon chainmails, abyssal whips. Every PVM item had its own specific area which I think was really really cool. And last up here we had a weekly Q&A this week. And I'm just going to go through a few of the interesting questions to me, obviously, the kind of subjective. First up here, can harvesting snape grass be sped up to be more like harvesting limpet roots? Currently it takes 2 minutes to harvest 16 with a high farming level. They see how it could be annoying and technically it is possible without too much effort. Is the team planning anything special for the 150th quest in Holtz Grunescape? like a recipe for disaster being the 100. They said Mod Ed is aware and we think we would do something for it. For recipe for disaster, each member of the dev team had a chapter and a bigger graphic budget. However, that quest was quite fun to work on and had a lot of content. Rather than looking at items to attach a Hydro Tail to to increase the price, can we instead look at buffing the Bone Crusher necklace to give it stats equivalent to a glory or even a fury. Zed, not a fan, sorry. Definitely not a fury. It could be slightly better than it is. One of the problems is that the use isn't really useful in a lot of places except catacombs or hydra. Can construction have more training methods? Now, really interesting answer here. Maz does have a design for a kind of construction contracts update, like to decorate or build a house for a local noble, or something kind of similar to a farming contract. Would it be possible to add a graceful skirt? They said yes, it would be easy, but they'd possibly prefer giving a transform option as currently they'd have to issue a check on all the places that it can be stored. What are your thoughts on 200 mil XP cosmetic capes? Uh, they'd rather not. Go for 200 mil because you want to, not because there's something at the end of it. Is there an update on the completionist uh, task list? It has been sitting on the side for a while. I'd like to revisit it and update it soon with Kebos and other future updates. Can the whip drop be removed from the unsired drop table and moved to the sire's regular table? This would make it more profitable. Currently, the GP per hour isn't optimal. If the desire is to make it more profitable, it already is in the long run with the dagger. Can the hunter pet be made available via other activities other than chinchampas? They said they're not too picky about these things, raccoons coming from thieving, bloodhounds from a clue chest, so if the community wants it, then sure. Could the desert amulet get a buff? The medium has one teleport and the elite is unlimited. Said maybe, we did a check on this for the arty cape a while ago, maybe we'd have to have a look at this one as well. Can we have the option to pay a large sum of GP to permanently open the Dagonaut doors? Zed, use a pet rock. <laughs> Making a change like this doesn't feel very old school, so we're not keen to do it. Can you make it so that the message, your box trap has collapsed, doesn't close the bank interface, as it's really annoying when you escape players at Black Chinchapas? We're planning on including this in an upcoming change. Recently, we as a company put in a blog about the fact that there's some things that aren't hitting the mark in terms of updates meeting expectations. The community team is working on a new way to integrate with certain groups of players, like back in November, trying to address some issues with PvP, like the idea of setting up group interviews and workshops 
workshop. They're optimistic that we can make that change and some others like changing the amount that people required to start Last Man Standing and other changes like that. And that is it for the weekly Q&A and my weekly recap. If you have any discussions or anything to say, please leave a comment down below. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. I appreciate it. And I will see you next time.